Good evening everyone, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, wishing you a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. I hope you're well and I hope you are safe. Now I have to say, it has been quite the day uh, for me today. I had plans to spend the entire day in the kitchen testing because I've been very, very inspired by the change of weather. As it's getting warmer, my mind's been going to healthy ice creams, healthy ice creams, healthy sorbets. So I had all these plans to spend the entire day in the kitchen, but let me tell you, sometimes your best laid plans come completely unstuck, and that was my day today. And it got me thinking of how much oh, I enjoy being with you guys right now. I couldn't imagine being anywhere in the world right then, better than right now with you guys spending some time in the kitchen because this is my happy place and we always we all have these types of days that don't go quite to plan and sometimes you know you sort of sit back and go well that could have gone better <laughs> and when you have a moment like that just like i've had a moment today it's really really important that you find your happy place if your happy place is the kitchen even better because what you can then do is you can get into the kitchen and you can create something healthy and delicious for yourself. It's always good to remember that 80 to 90% of our serotonin, which is our happy hormone, gets created in our gut. So when we are filling our body full of food that supports us, supports our nutrition, supports our gut health, we are also feeding our happy hormones. So um, I am here right now with you guys, and as I said, I could not imagine being anywhere else in the world I have a wonderful recipe to share with you guys tonight. I've been testing it for a couple of days now and every single time I test it, it keeps on getting better and better and better. So the recipe that I'm doing tonight is a, um, a hat tip to the beautiful cuisine of Malaysia and we are doing a wonderful Malaysian style lamb curry. Now, if you um, are thinking lamb, I don't eat lamb or lamb's really expensive, do not fear. You can make this recipe using um, mutton, which is obviously sheep, it's a little bit older and a little bit cheaper to purchase, so you could use it using mutton. You could also make this recipe with beef as well, like do a beef curry. You can make it using chicken, I suggest chicken thigh, and you could even make it using goat. If you wanted to make a goat curry, this makes the most amazing goat curry. So there's uh, lots of options for you guys, and I haven't forgotten about our vegetarian friends as well. All you would need to do if you were to make a vegetarian curry is make the spice pack, spice paste, make the sauce, and then add your favorite vegetables. You don't even have to slow cook it. It takes, you know, it'll take maybe half an hour instead of taking a couple of hours of slow cooking. But anyway, enough chatter. Let's get into the recipe. Why don't you come on down and join me on my beach? There are a few steps involved, but it's worth it. And once you sort of get your head around the spice paste that we're going to create, you will begin, begin to work out that you could actually use the same spice paste to create a number of different curries for yourself and your family. So come on down to my bench. I have it all set up, ready to go, as you can see. Um, the first thing that we need to discuss is what sort of lamb we're going to be using for this curry. So I am using a boneless lamb shoulder. So it's got a little bit of um, connective tissue in there, which is absolutely fine. You don't have to use, um, you know, use the most expensive cut of lamb. And it's the same with beef as well. You want to choose something that does um, curry up really really well. If you're wondering about the bells, it's not because we've started Christmas in our house, it's our cat. <laughs> it's just, uh, I'm not sure what she's doing but she's jingling her bells because she, she knows I've had a hard day I think. So yes, you want to choose yourself up, you know, a, a cut of um, meat that, and it's okay for it to be a, obviously a stewing type of meat because this is going to be slow cooked for around about two and a half to three hours. So I'm using, like I said, I'm using a lamb shoulder or you could use a lamb leg roast just obviously with no bone and what you want to do firstly is you want to cut it into chunks so these are the sort of chunks that are going to go straight into obviously your curry and they are going to shrink down while they're when they're cooked so it may start off around about sort of that size but it will shrink down to more like a bite-sized portion so that's the first thing is you want to Take your lamb, you don't have to trim it at all because all of that connective tissue um, is going to be softened obviously by the long cooking process. And yes, it is a, now the cats are right beside me, both of them, because they're like, meat! <laughs> no, it's for our curry. You can't have it, sorry. 
Don't look at me like that. It's for the curry. <laughs> so the reason we're able to use these, you know, I suppose tougher cuts is because that long cooking time helps to melt that connective tissue. So it's really important that, that we um, do do the slow cooking. And as I was saying, the reason why I am doing the slow cooking, slow cooked recipe is because so many of you asked for one. And I thought, here's a really nice versatile curry that you can make. You can change the meat up depending on obviously what you like or what your budget is. It's really the importance of this recipe is no, not so much that I'm using lamb. It's more so to teach you guys how to make the spice paste because that is the really versatile thing here. So um, for about four to five portions of curry, here's some I chopped up earlier, you will need about 750 grams of whatever meat it is you decide to use, which is about 1.5 pounds of meat in total, all cut up into those glorious little cubes. Next thing you want to do is get yourself, um, cats are just gonna, the cats are just gonna hound me now. They're like, it's dinner time. No, it's not, not for you. All right. Two teaspoons of a mineral salt is going to go onto our meat of your choice. See, I'm just not going to say lamb now, I'm just going to say meat of your choosing. Give it a little bit of a stir in there. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to set this aside just while we make up the spice paste. So I'm just going to pop that off to the side and we can think about making our spice paste. So remember this is a Malaysian style curry. I am doing quite a mild version you can make it as spicy as you like and in fact the more traditional uh, Malaysian style lamb curry does have a bit of a kick to it let me tell you and so I'm making this especially for our son who doesn't like too much chili but you can obviously increase the chili amount so the amount of chili that I'm using in here where is it Ooh, there it is I am using um, some dried chili flakes for a start and in the recipe I, I suggest to you to add anything from sort of four teaspoons to ten teaspoons of dried chili. It's totally up to you. For our son, I'm going to be putting in four teaspoons of the dried chili. And I'm actually putting it into this little bowl here. It's just got some hot water in there. I'm just going to let that soak for a couple of minutes. And if you wanted to at this point in time, give it more heat. Just be mindful that spicy food can inflame the gut. And if you are doing a gut reset or you are looking to really give your gut a bit of a clean out, I would go really lightly on the chili here, really, really lightly. But if you are happy, go lucky, in maintenance, happy with where you are, know that you can handle the old chili on the gut. You could even at this point add some fresh chilies as well. So a couple of you know long red chilies could be also added into our little processor and I am going to make all the paste ingredients in here. So I'm just going to leave that off to the side and we're going to start with when it comes to the paste. I've got some extra virgin coconut oil here and I'm going to be adding in a tablespoon, just a tablespoon of our extra virgin coconut oil. Remember this uh, recipe is dairy free, gluten free, sugar free of course. As well as that, I am also going to be putting into here, well, obviously we'll put our chilies in in a minute. I have here, where is it? Oh, I have in here, this little bowl. Firstly, I have my own herbs that I grew myself. This is from my garden. There's like five varieties of herbs in here. Yes, I have finally managed to grow herbs and they, they haven't just not died. They have flourished. In, a couple, in about a month, I have the most amazing patio full of, I've got about 10 different types of fresh herbs. So we'll talk about those later, but I just want to show you how clever I am. <laughs> I'm just so blown away. Every time I go to my herb garden to, to, um, to either water the herbs or just you know, stare lovingly, lovingly at them because I'm so impressed with myself, I always try and channel um, the people that inspired me to do my herb garden. And they are part of this community. There is um, Jan, Mum Jan, she inspired me with all her gorgeous herbs. There is Russ as well, and also Mia. And every time I go out to water my herbs, I always think, now, what would Russ do in this situation? Would he water them quite heavily? Or would he just like back off a little bit? Or would Jan approve of what I'm doing here to trim back my herbs? Every single time I think of those lovely people. So anyway, I digress. Uh, into our spice paste I have here, two um, ends of the lemongrass. So this is the bottom part of the lemongrass. Um, they are the stalks. I'm just going to roughly chop them because they're going to go into our processor. And um, when it comes to lemongrass, 
you can either get the lemongrass fresh but I actually get mine frozen and always have lemongrass in the freezer only because it's so expensive to buy just one stalk but I can buy a whole bag of frozen lemongrass and the whole bag which maybe has 15 to 20 stalks cost me about four dollars and you get that from your local um, Asian supermarket so those go in there we're doing two lemongrass this is what helps to give the very distinct flavor that you will get from a Malaysian style curry is all these little goodies that we're adding in now so the lemongrass goes in there just the white part so if you've got the green part which is the top of the stalks you just can keep those for something else they don't they don't need to be in this one um, as well as that we're going to add in here it is I have just a small onion as you can see you could use a red onion you could use a white onion just a nice small one that is just roughly chopped into a couple of pieces that is added in as well we're going to add some of our wonderful finely chopped ginger and with that i'm putting two tablespoons and i like i said there's a, there's there's quite a few different ingredients in this recipe but what i have found is that these are all ingredients that i use quite regularly so even though there's a lot you'll probably look into your pantry and go actually i've got pretty much all of that stuff there might be only one or two things that are missing for me it was the lamb, I had to go out and get the lamb, I had everything else I needed. So a tablespoon now of our finely chopped garlic goes in there as well. This one here in this little jar, this is coriander seeds. I'm going to be adding in uh, two teaspoons of coriander seeds or thereabouts. If you don't have coriander seeds, don't worry, you could use fennel seeds or you could use cumin seeds, but coriander definitely definitely is quite good in this particular recipe though they go inside there the next ingredient we're going to be adding where is it here it is is i'm going to be adding in some um nut butter so you could use um, almond nut butter you could use um, you know walnut nut butter any type of nut butter you want or seed butter this is going to help to give it flavor and also help to give it some really good healthy fat so i'm putting in to here two tablespoons of my i'm actually mine's a combination of nut and seed butter would you believe got that at costco very good buy so that goes in there that is some great healthy fats for us and then we're also going to add and this may be one that you need to track down so what i have here as you can see it's like a big black block of tar it's actually tamarind paste now tamarind is a very sour fruit that is quite common in asian southeast asian cuisine you can find a block of tamarind like this at your asian supermarket it's really cheap to buy lasts forever because you don't need to use much it all goes a long way um, but you can also buy it in a squeezy tube as paste and so um, it doesn't matter how you get it whether it's in a block or it's with it is a tam tamarind paste you need to add about a teaspoon look at it it's like it's really <laughs> it's really thick it's like molasses but it's a very sour fruit and um the wonder of malaysian cuisine is how balanced their flavors are and they get balanced from things like you know using a nut in there or using that sour tamarind and obviously the spice of the chilies all these things are really important to get this wonderful balance within the cuisine and talking about balance we're also going to add in a teaspoon of our mineral salt goes in there and the very last thing balance again i'm going to be adding an inulin powder i need a clean tablespoon for this one inulin powder so not only are we increasing the dietary fiber in our curry which is really important because this isn't a, this isn't if, if we didn't put the inulin in there wouldn't be a lot of dietary fiber in there remember inulin feeds your healthy gut bacteria and we're doing this for our happy hormones right for our serotonin so i'm adding into um this two heaps that my last one was in heaps two heap tablespoons of inulin powder we've now increased the dietary fiber but we've also added a sweetness remember this is all about balance so once all those things are over there we're going to go back to our chilies remember two to ten teaspoons depending on how hot you like it of chilies soaked in 50 mils which is about 1.7 um, fluid ounces of hot water that then goes water and all into our little blender and now we can think about giving it a little bit of a blend shaking may be necessary depending on, depending on how busy your blender is but what you're trying to achieve is a very smooth paste 
so no big lumps of, of onion or lemongrass or anything like that in there. So it may take, you know, may take 30 seconds to a minute. And I can actually feel that it's still quite chunky, so I'm going to go for maybe another 10 seconds. with that I'll show you the consistency that we have so you know what we're after it literally is like a peanut butter paste that is the kind of um, texture that you're after with this particular one so let's set that aside just for a second I've just turned my wok on here I'm going to be cooking everything in the wok and then transferring it to a slow cooker because we want to give it a little bit of we want to give it a little bit of a head start rather than putting everything in cold into the slow cooker Plus, we need to give the spices time to bloom to get lots of good flavor. So heading back over to my coconut oil. Nearly run out. I might have to change jars. I think I'm done with that one. Where's the other one? I don't know where it is. Oh, well, we'll make do. Okay, one. I'm actually after two tablespoons of coconut oil with this. I'm going to see if I can extract it at all. Mahi is having a good look for me now to see what I've done with it. I don't know. Not sure, that's all right. We'll get there. Oh, you found it. Oh, you're a clever man. Thank you. Perfect. Oosh. New coconut oil to the rescue. Two tablespoons of coconut oil goes into our wok. Healthy fat. Remember, coconut oil fat is not the enemy, fat is our friend, and coconut oil is a great one. So, coconut oil goes in there. We want to create a little bit of flavor on top of this right now. So what I'm also going to be doing, if I can find it in my bag of tricks, uh, is one, I'm going to be adding some turmeric powder. The reason I'm not adding the turmeric powder to the spice mix is I don't want to stain the plastic of my machine. So just a little tip for you guys, I'm going to add the turmeric in there so then we don't get a bit of the stain, which is very cool. Ah, I've got some sticky sauce that's going to go in there as well. About a tablespoon of sticky sauce goes in there. I'm now adding curry leaves into it. Those are curry leaves. You can find them at your Asian supermarket as well. So I'm adding it. About a tablespoon of curry leaves go in there. Things are starting to get nice and fragrant. And now I'm taking the turmeric. I will measure this. And I'm putting in a heat tablespoon of that wonderful anti-inflammatory turmeric is going into our wok and we are allowing now those wonderful spices are starting to bloom and they're starting to get some flavor but we're not going to stop there we're going to we're going to give this curry even more flavor because that's what it's all about so we're going to turn now head straight away to our spice paste what if you guys can see can you see? there you go that's better oh don't fall off the bench um straight up to our spice paste our blend and I'm going to, I'm doing this all on a medium heat, by the way. I'm going to add it straight into the base of our wok. And now it's time to develop the flavor of our spice blend. So this is a really, really important step. Because what we are doing now is we're taking those wonderful spices that we have in there all those gorgeous gorgeous flavors you know from the ginger and the garlic and the lemongrass you know all those wonderful flavors and we are giving it a bit of heat which means we're giving we're intensifying the flavors that already exist in that spice paste by doing just this giving it a little bit of heat so what you'll start to notice as this cooks along is the color will start to change in your spice blend, which is exactly what you want it to do. So you're looking for a color change. You're looking to fill your kitchen with the most amazing aromas as those spices begin to bloom. And I'm just gonna push them all off to the side, just like this, because I've got another little trick to show you guys, is I'm also gonna take some toasted coconut, oh sorry, some, some desiccated coconut. I am gonna toast it. I'm gonna take some coconut here, and I'm going to add two heat tablespoons of coconut to the base of my frying pan. So not only am I, am I blooming the spices from the paste at the same time, I am 
toasting up the coconut. Because I don't know about you guys, but the aroma and the flavor and the taste of toasted coconut as opposed to raw coconut, it's pretty delicious. And this is just going to totally, totally help with giving this curry the most amazing, amazing flavor. So yes, we have now got a bit of a toasting action going on there. Keep an eye on it because they do, they do burn quite quickly our coconut. But we've also got a bit of a bloom in action going on here. Everything's happening. It's wonderful. I wish you guys were here. Not only could you help us eat this, but you would also be able to partake in the smells that are happening in this kitchen right now. And it's pretty exciting. I would sit you right over here. This is the end of my bench. I've got some bar stools. You can sit up right there and we can chat. And then we can cook. And then, of course, we can eat, which is always the exciting part, right? So you want to give this blooming action around about five minutes and as I was saying what you are uh, essentially looking for is you're looking for a color change on your paste and as well as a color change you are looking to really begin to notice the aromatics beginning to come out of that paste as we cook it here in our wok you can use a big pan of course as well but I do like cooking in my wok it seems that I get quite a bit of curry in <laughs> when I do that all right so it's fresh curry someone just asked if you can use fresh curry leaves oh my gosh i'm so jealous if you can use fresh curry leaves what a great question yes you can use fresh curry leaves you can also use kefir leaves kefir lime leaves as well all those leaves work really really well in this curry so if you've got them fresh oh i am jealous beyond words fresh curry leaves are the best they really are okay we've got a lovely little color change happening the aromas are amazing really happy with how it's progressing it's time to grab our chosen meat so whether you're like i said whether you're doing lamb or whether you've decided to go with chicken thigh or maybe you want to do a beef you know chuck or a beef stew then absolutely whatever it is you choose now is the time to add your meat if you are deciding to do this but make it vegetarian you wouldn't add your vegetables at this stage by the way you'd add them once the sauce is complete, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, you'd add them then, because what I would suggest you do if you are making a vegetarian one, is you pre-blanch all your vegetables, so they're already ready, like they're still lovely and crunchy, just blanch them in boiling water for a minute, and then you drain them, and then you cool them down, and when you're ready, when the sauce is ready, you add the vegetables then. So all you're literally doing is just cooking the sauce and then adding the vegetables, so it's really, really easy. Right, this is all looking quite fabulous. I'm happy with, like I said, with the progression. And at this stage, what we would normally do is I would let the lamb or the whatever meat it is you're using, I'll let it cook in the pan for around about five minutes. Um, but just for ease of, you know, getting the job done quickly for you guys, I am going to add the next ingredient now. So what I have here is I have one of my favorites, coconut milk. We're adding, of course it's coconut milk, right? Coconut milk is being added to this and I'm adding 400 mils of coconut milk, which is 14 ounces of coconut milk goes into our wok. Already it looks good. I just added coconut milk. Oh, goodness me. Give it a bit of a stir. And you're going to see the curry begin to take its shape. You're like, oh, I recognize it now. Bridget's made curry. Yes, I have. I've made, well, I've started to make that wonderful Malaysian style uh, curry. Now, if you have added a lot more chilies than I have, your sauce will be a lot redder than mine. But because I was, I was being really thoughtful of our son and also of my tender gut, I have not added as much chilies as what is normally added. So I've got quite a yellow, which was from the turmeric sort of a curry but if you've added more chilies especially if you've added fresh ones you will definitely notice a deeper color in your curry both are correct neither are wrong it all depends on what you like so you can make this whatever you want it to be so the trick next is to bring this um bring this to a boil or a simmer not really a boil you're going to bring it to a simmer and once it has come to a simmer and it's you know, bubbling away there nicely. So you know that, that all the ingredients in your pot are warm or hot. What you then want to do is you want to transfer this mixture into your slow cooker. If you can, 
preheat your slow cooker. Some slow cookers, um, you're able to preheat them. Preheat it on high. That's just gonna speed up the process even more. So you've got a hot slow cooker and you've got hot ingredients going into it, which means that you are going to get um, your curry cooked faster than if everything was cold. So that's what you would do now, is you would take all of this and you'd transfer it into your slow cooker and then you'd cook it on high for anywhere between two and a half to three and a half hours. Basically what you're looking for is you're looking for a very, very tender, tender meat or lamb or beef or whatever that falls apart in the mouth. If you're cooking chicken, it might take a bit, a bit quick, about two hours. But if you're doing beef, it may take a little bit more as well. So just, just keep an eye on it. But for the lamb, you're looking at around about two and a half to three and a half hours um, of cooking will get you a lovely tender lamb. So I am going to put this off to the side. I have prepared one earlier, but before I show you the finished result, I want to teach you something very cool that is traditionally served with curry. And that is coconut cauliflower rice. I know that's not traditionally served with curry. It's normally rice or cauliflower rice. Sorry, rice or coconut rice. But I want to teach you guys how to make coconut cauliflower rice. And it's really, really quick. Are you ready? It's so cool. So this is what you can serve with your curry. Because you're going to get a lot of liquid from your curry. And the, the beauty is in what you serve it with. And obviously, coconut cauliflower rice could not be better. So um, I've got my raw blitzed cauliflower rice here, just threw that into my food processor and just until it looked like rice. And one of the really great things uh, about doing it like that is, um, you know, rather than buying it already riced, is that it's lovely and fresh, but I mean, if you do have to buy it already riced, as long as you're eating it, it doesn't really matter. But um, you're looking at about 200 grams on average per person. So whoever, however, whoever is, however many you're eating, um, you wanna allow about 200 grams of cauliflower rice per person. Because remember, this is not just about the curry, this is also about the accompaniment. So I've got my pan, my, my, my little pan on here. And um, this, like I said, this is so cool and so easy to do, like literally easy to do and just makes the dish so incredibly memorable. So we don't need much coconut oil at all. Like I'm literally gonna be adding in about half a teaspoon into there, into my, into my hot pan. That's all we need. And then give it a bit of a swirl. Make sure it's fully, fully covered. I've got turmeric everywhere today. <laughs> I've gotta be careful. Ooh, there's a bit of, oh, there, she broke her spatula. It's been one of those days, guys, let me tell you. All right. Uh, so we're just gonna give that a little bit of a mix around just to make sure there's no coconut everywhere. You could use coconut oil spray as well. And then I'm gonna take my cauliflower rice, fill up the bottom of my little pan here, and let that do a little bit of a stir fry. Where is my room? That'll do. Yep, bit of a stir fry. Here we go. Let's add a little bit of salt to there as well. A little bit of salt. Just allowing it just to come up and heat a bit through. You've noticed that it's not sticking to my pan, which is really good. Because that means that the um, that tiny, tiny little bit of coconut oil, or coconut spray, is just enough to make sure it doesn't stick to your pan. I'm doing all of this on medium heat too, by the way. So medium heat, not too high. Keep it moving, keep it working. And then we're going to add the more coconutty bit back to our friend the milk. And for this amount of um, coconut, which is just about 200 grams, maybe a little bit more, I'm going to be starting with a tablespoon of coconut. I might add another one. Two tablespoons of coconut milk goes on into there. You don't want to, you don't want to make it too wet, not too soggy. But at the same time, you're making coconut rice. So it needs to taste like coconut. Because that's why it's so delicious. And it just works so well with curry, so incredibly well. So allow that just to kind of heat through, you know, have a bit of a taste, make sure that you like it. You may want to add a bit more coconut milk. You may want to add a little bit more salt, but that is all you need to do to get your own special bowl of coconut rice. The only other thing that I would suggest that you do to it, once you've cooked it for a couple of minutes and you're pretty happy with it, the only other thing I would suggest that you do to it 
just to make it that little bit special and it also gives me another opportunity to show off my herbs from my garden <laughs> I know I know you've heard it all before is to grab you up some herbs I would suggest uh, fresh coriander and you know just give them a bit of a chop bit of a chop through this is obviously just going to help with flavor and fresh coriander is incredible especially when it comes from your own garden <laughs> I know I should show you guys my garden it's very very sweet I'm very proud of it I don't have a green thumb hence why I'm really proud of it all right so a bit of coriander goes through there and now you just have the most wonderful 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 side dish wonderful I come and say it again wonderful wonderful side dish all right so let's play up because as I was saying I have prepared one earlier for you guys bear with me I am very proud firstly of what I cooked it in that's right this is straight from the 1970s this is my crock pot I bought it at the Salvation Army store uh, a couple years ago now I fell in love look at it isn't it gorgeous it is so spectacular this is my crock pot my slow cooker I, I'm gonna leave this to one of the children in my will <laughs> it's that important to me I'm like this needs to be handed down to the family so yes I will hand this down most definitely all right so what have we got here apart from the most fabulously colored crock pot if you've got a crock pot like this please I'd love to see a photo we can have like a crock pot, crock pot club it'll be really cool right everyone can we can all get together and everyone has to bring something cooked in a crock pot oh that sounds spectacular all right what have I got here I know I'm talking a lot apologies it's been one of those days as I've already said there you go can you see I'm not try I'm trying not to drip everywhere can you see how fabulous that is it is so glorious after two and a, I think I was going on two and a half to three close to three hours of slow cooking on high in my 1970s crock pot you are rewarded with the most spectacular spectacular curry there's a lot of sauce in here as I was saying hence why it's really important that you consider your side dish as well so let's grab up something to plate I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna need to plate it in gosh I'm not very organized sorry guys what shall I need a, I need a nice bowl one second I'm going this way for a nice bowl oh yeah this is a nice bowl I like this bowl I like that bowl that works for me today that makes me happy that brings me joy <laughs> and it's also going to be a really really great bowl to show off the fabulous color that you get from this curry it is like it is magical absolutely magical okay so you want to make sure you get heaps of sauce as I was saying you know, you're going to get you know you get four to five portions if not more out of this curry because the trick is in serving it with lots and lots of sauces you can see so that's our curry let's not forget as well as our curry I have got some coconut yogurt which I definitely want to serve on the side as well I'm gonna put my coconut yogurt there I'm gonna put my curry there as a look can you notice the theme we have an overriding theme here tonight yes it's orange seven it's 1970s orange slow cooking night which is a pretty fabulous night to have I have to say I need one more bowl for oh my yes here it is goodness me <laughs> oh never mind I've enjoyed myself tonight thanks guys I've had a great time <laughs> we're gonna put the coconut rice in our little bowl here and have quite frankly the most spectacular little meal here and of course this curry is amazing if you make it in bulk and freeze it down you know it's one of those ones that actually benefits from sitting for a while the flavors develop there's our coconut rice look at that oh I'm so happy and I just, ha I just happened to have an orange plate there that goes with our orange crock pot so there you have it this is my Malaysian style lamb curry with the most gorgeous and simple to make cauliflower coconut rice and then if you wanted to you can serve it especially if you do a spicy one serve a little bit of coconut yogurt on the side but let's not forget celebrate with some fresh herbs too <laughs> 
from Bridget's Garden. Why not? Let's just have some fresh herbs. Because one of the things I do love about eating this style as well is you do eat it with big pieces of fresh herb. And you have literally the most awesome, awesome, fragrant, exceptional meal just waiting for you. With all those fresh little herbs, that lovely, lovely curry. Coconut rice is so good. So I hope you have enjoyed this. I know it's a big recipe. It's taken us a little bit longer than normal. I will be sharing the PDF with you guys tomorrow on Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. If you maybe didn't manage to scribble down all the ingredients, I want to share that with you guys tomorrow morning on Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. Keep an eye out for that. Um, but it, we've still got a couple more of our Malaysian cooking classes to go. Should I tell you what we're going to be doing next? It's another one of my favorites. For anyone who's ever been to any part of Malaysia, you know that the hawkers, the food stalls, are very, very popular. The hawker stalls. So we will be. We still have to go this week. We will be doing um, a very popular and famous chicken satay that you would get from the hawker store, whether you're in, you know, Singapore or different parts of Malaysia. You always see the chicken satay. We're doing chicken satay with um, a lovely, delicious, fragrant, classic peanut sauce and we are also as well as that I'm going to teach you guys how to make the most delicious sweet potato donuts all that's coming up here all week plus we've got Q&A Friday hope you join me then it's a very special Q&A Friday too by the way hope you join me for that until then everyone be safe be well keep smiling find your happy place and do whatever you need to do to keep that smile Plastered onto your beautiful face. All right, guys, everyone take care. Enjoy. Bye.